Okay, I'd like to discuss the features of the new 3.9 biocomposite Swivlock MPFL kit. A couple of things to start are some new drill bits. And these are 2.4 diameter. The nice thing about the bit configuration is there's two lengths. So before when you'd put your bits in, they would be hard to drill the second one because the length of the first one would get in your way. But this way you drill the shorter one first. And then when you drill your larger one, you're not going to hit the end of that bit as you put your second one in. So that's a nice feature. And they're marked for the appropriate depth with a laser line for your depth of drilling for the 3.9 biocomposite Swivlock. Another nice feature is a new parallel and also an excellent divergent guide sleeve for drilling your pins. So this particular one is the parallel one. And so what you can do here is drop your pins in and be perfectly parallel after you put your shorter pin in. And you can go from 15, 17 half to 20 in terms of your distance between your anchors like such. Then there's the divergent option if you or convergent depending which way you place this guide so you put your shorter pin in same distances 15 17 half 20 and you can see here i can get some divergence of my pins and then if i flip this around here you can see you can get a convergent by three degrees so either divergence or convergence with this guide if you chose to make them not perfectly parallel so nice feature there so next for over drilling on our pins is the new drill bit, which is 4.0 diameter, and it's got the laser line here for the depth of drilling, so you can see that easily for over your two pins. Then we have the 3.9 biocomposite swivel lock anchor for our purchase in the patella in our two bone sockets there. Another nice feature, every case, I believe it's necessary to find your isometric point, so-called Shetley's point, and this is the guide. It's been modified now so that your passing pin goes actually through the hole. So once you get your optimal position at Shetley's point, based on the alignment of the posterior femoral cortex and the two parallel lines between the upper aspect of Blumensatz and a parallel of the medial femoral condyle and a true lateral, you find your spot, you drill it, and now you can just slide the guide off and your pin's in place. So it's a one-step way to make sure you keep your isometric point on the femoral side. Ever night no wires before for passing alongside your drill pin after you find your isometric point. And here's our reamer in the kit, seven millimeter diameter, low profile reamer for creating the femoral socket. And then we have our new fixation screw, which is a biocomposite fast thread, six millimeters diameter, 20 millimeters long for your femoral graft fixation. So now I'm gonna use the angled drill guide and make my first hole for the stabilization of the MPFL and the patella, make my first hole toward the equator, the mid portion of the patella, so we have our small medial incision. So we're just gonna bring our guide sleeve down to bone at right here at the mid portion of the equator of the patella. And when we start this, just from a clinical perspective, it's important to not be too dorsal. You don't wanna create a stress riser in the patella, which could lead to a potential risk of fracture. So I'm in good bone in the mid portion of the patella, I'm going to put this drill bit down to the black laser line, which will be the appropriate depth for the swivel lock anchor. So right there, I stop. So we put the shorter pin at the equator, and now with this guide, I have the option of 15 millimeters difference, 17 and a half or 20. Usually I take the 15, and we've set this one to be up a little convergent with this guide. You remember, there's two options, a parallel guide or the angle guide, which can be either convergent or divergent. We chose this one to make it a little bit, it's a small patella. So we're gonna make this one a bit convergent. I'm gonna go with the 15 mark. So this is the longer pin. It's important to chuck it at this laser mark here before you drill. And by doing so, you won't hit the other pin. So here's my 15 millimeter mark. And I drill to the depth of that laser line that you can see right off the guide. Right there. So now I'm in place. And now we're gonna over drill the pins. Guide comes off. So now we're going to over drill with our 4 0 drill bit to the depth of the laser line. So we'll do our equator pin first. So we've reamed over our equator pin, and this is our more proximal pin. Again, we go to the depth of the laser line, 4 0 drill. So we're just going to pass our sutures from our graft. This is from a 2 0 fiber loop. So now we're going to insert our graft, our sutured end from a 2.0 fiber loop with the 3.9 swivel lock in our proximal hole. So I like to hold these little 2.0 fiber link sutures to make sure that the suture part of the graft goes into the hole with the tip of the fixation device like so. So now I've got 
sutured end of the graft in the hole, and here comes the 3-9 swivel lock to give me my fixation. Nice squeak. So there's great fixation, and we just pop it out. So you can see we have the majority of the sutured grafts. So we've got good fixation with that 3-9 swivel lock. So now we load our second swivel lock for our equator fixation of the graft. So now this is the fixation for the hole toward the equator of the patella. Again, sutured part of the graft. I keep tension on those sutures and I want to make sure the sutured part of the graft goes in that hole with the tip of the swivel lock inserter, like so. So you can see the majority of the sutured part of the graft is now in the socket and now my fixation with the 3-9 swivel lock. Again, you can hear a squeaking. So you can see we have great fixation in the patella. You can see I can pull the patella immediately here. Both sutured portions of the graft, which were sutured to 20 millimeters, the sutured portion is in the socket with the swivel lock giving me my fixation. Again, that's a very important point. Make sure you insert the sutured part of the graft in with the tip of the inserter before you put the swivel lock on. Gives you great fixation. One other nice thing is I keep these 2-0 fiber wire sutures that are in the anchor. I keep those because I like to use those sutures to close the meter retina acro tissue later on, just give me a little additional uh, fixation as, as needed. So I keep those sutures in place for now. But again, great fixation with the 3-9 swivel lock. So we've used the C-arm to find our isometric point for femoral attachment of the graft, and that's based on Shetley's point. And the way I find that is the guide is labeled anterior and posterior. And so what I do is I line up this black line from the x-ray on the posterior femoral cortex. And then there's two lines marked here, posterior medial condyle and Blumensatz line, which are exactly that. So I position these two lines that are parallel to each other, upper aspect of Blumensatz and the posterior medial condyle. So we've done that radiographically. It's really important to make sure you have a true lateral view that the condyles have to superimpose. There was a study published that showed the great difference that happens if you're not on a true lateral, you're not gonna be at the isometric point. The nice thing about the new guide with this kit is that the hole is larger. So now that I've taken the time to find that perfect isometric point on the femur, now I simply pass my 2-4 beef pin right at that point and I'm done. So we've found the point and now I've got my pin in position. So now I'm just gonna make a little incision at this point. This is again is for my femoral isometric attachment point in my graft. So I made my incision and I like to drill this a bit of an angle, posterior medial to anterior lateral. So now that I've got my isometric point, I drill. So a little bit posterior medial and anterior lateral. So now we have our isometric point. This is a 7-0 low profile reamer. So I'm gonna ream over my pin. And our graft was about 215 millimeters. So I like to give myself enough room for tensioning. So that should be plenty. Now the next critical point is at this time, get your night nitinol wire and pass it right now so you know your pathway for your screw. So I can feel I'm right in position there. So at this point, I like to place a fiber link in the mid portion of my graft on the patellar side to get fixation of the graft right in the middle. So I'm gonna pass my graft extra capsular. So what I do is I, I've got the capsule in my pickups and I just kind of dissect Outside the capsule, I'll spread here so it'll make my graft passage easy. I just take a looped fiber wire suture now, pull that to the medial incision. I got my fiber link here. So here's my fiber link, just my shuttle. So now I deliver my graft out my medial incision. And again, it's extra capsular. Got plenty of length here. So now we've passed our looped end of our graft. We've created our socket at the isometric point. We put our night nitinol wire so we can find the path for the screw. Simply pass the fiber link through. And then I like to, when I'm dunking the graft, keep your night nitinol wire in place. I like to put a little bit of a tension with a 90 degree clamp. And as we do over the graft, you'll feel it kind of pop into the socket. Remember that's a 7-0 low profile. There it goes, pops in. You can see the graft pops in all the way in. So we've got good fixation there. And I think it's critical for me is the position 
of fixation. I actually don't like to put any pressure on these sutures. I position the knee at 30 degrees of flexion right here. And I just line up the lateral edge of the patella with the trochlea. And it just finds itself tensioning. So I don't really even pull on these at all. So here's our biocomposite fast thread, six millimeter diameter screw, 20 millimeters long, passing it over our night and all. So now I'm just securing the screw. I can feel the squeak. I don't feel the screw at all. So there's our fixation. Now checking the patella. Remember I have these two sutures I used to close that medial tissue. But you can see now the patella is stable here and it's got some mobility. It's really important. It's just a check rein. You do not want to over tension it. But here's our stability of the patella. You can see our two limbs of the graft here. Full range of motion, good fixation, but they're not overly tight. Just right. This is actually perfect. You want to have a little bit of movement toward full extension. Stressing at 20 degrees, the patella is totally stable. Nice movement in the groove. No skipping, no jumping. Completed MPFL.